Welcome to week 36. Today there is so, so much to talk about, including baby development, symptoms you will be feeling, uh, what to expect at your next appointment, and be sure to watch till the end because I'm going to talk about the signs of labor. You definitely don't want to miss that because even though you do have a due date, in reality, only about 4 to 5% of babies are actually born on their due date. They can come before or they can come after their due date. So it's important to know what to watch for to recognize those early symptoms of labor. But first, if you're new here, my name is Diana. You are watching In the Pink and if you're new here, In the Pink means in good health and spirit. So if you like being healthy and happy, click subscribe because you are in the right place. At 36 weeks, you are starting your ninth and final month and you have four more weeks to go till your due date. At this point, you can really start to count down because you're almost there, which is a good thing too because these final weeks are a little bit more challenging. But you got this though. And always remember that I'm here cheering you on. Go team! You might notice that you are feeling a little bit more tired, a little bit more achy. You might be starting to do the pregnancy waddle, but don't worry, you are on the last lap and your little one will be here soon. But hey, do me a favor and let me know how you're doing in the comments section below. One of my favorite parts about making these pregnancy videos is that you mamas share a little bit about your pregnancy with me and it makes me so happy and so excited for what is to come for you and I read all of the comments. Speaking of your little one, by 36 weeks they are now around 6 pounds and around 18 to 19 inches long. All the organ systems are just about up and running. The circulatory system, the immune system, even the respiratory system system, which is one of the last organ systems to fully develop, is ready and gearing up for the baby's first breath. The digestive system is also ready to go, but it hasn't started really functioning yet since the baby's been getting their nutrition from their umbilical cord. And it won't be fully developed until your baby is around six months old to where it will be able to digest things more complex than just breast milk or formula. Now let's really talk about labor because at this point if you were to go into labor today your OB is most likely not going to try to stop your labor from progressing. The baby was ready but I was not. And there really is a good chance that your baby will go home with you when you leave the hospital. Not always because they're still a month early but most babies will so that is really nice to know that your baby would be just fine at this point. As for you, hang in there. Use lotion for your itchy belly. Elevate your legs or use compression stockings if you have swollen ankles. And rest as much as you need. Now you might be still feeling that nesting instinct, which is kind of our natural instincts to clean and organize the house to prepare for when you bring your new baby home. If you are feeling nesting instincts and feel well enough to, Go ahead and organize and clean, but be careful. Don't lift anything too heavy. Take breaks as often as you need and ask for help to move or lift anything like cribs or boxes or whatever. By now, most OBs will want to start seeing you every week until you deliver. One important test your OB will likely do if you didn't get it done last week is your group B test. Now I talked a lot about this in detail at week 35 video. Check out that video if you missed it. But group B strep is a common bacteria that if you have it at the time of delivery, you can actually pass that on to your baby, which could cause the baby to have an infection, which can be quite serious. So usually at 36 weeks, your OB will swab your vagina and your rectum and then send that to the lab to be tested for group B strep. If it's positive, You'll just have to have an IV antibiotic before delivery. Your OB or your midwife will probably also want to check your cervix at your next appointment. And they're really just doing this to see where you are. And there can be a lot of variations from person to person. So don't be concerned if they say that your cervix is closed and firm. And don't be surprised if they say your cervix is starting to thin and dilate a little. Both can be normal at this point. If your cervix is a little dilated this early, it doesn't mean you're in labor. A cervix dilated to like a one or a two at this point is fine as your body is preparing for delivery. Now, if your cervix was dilated to like a six, you probably just earned yourself a trip to labor and delivery because you're in labor. So let's talk about symptoms that you might experience before labor starts so you can know what to expect. Now we call these soft 
signs of labor are things that you can watch for to let you know that your body is preparing to have a baby. But they aren't things that need to send you to the hospital. If you notice one of these things, you can just kind of note it. You can mention it to your doctor at your next appointment if you want, but it doesn't mean you're going into labor in the next few hours. But it could possibly mean that labor is just around the corner, so it's important to be aware of them. So number one, the mucus plug comes out. And I always kind of chuckle about the name mucus plug because when I hear it, I always picture a plug holding in the baby and when you uncork the cervix, the baby comes out. And that just isn't really how it works. So when you are pregnant, your cervical mucus gets thicker and more mucousy. And as it does, it kind of collects at the cervix. And it's thought that this helps protect the uterus and your baby from any bacteria entering inside through the cervix. As you get closer to delivery, your cervix thins a little, it dilates a little bit too, and that cervical mucus can become loosened and come into the vagina and then be discharged. So you might notice increased thick vaginal discharge, or you might see the whole plug come out. So again, if you notice a mucus plug, this doesn't mean that you need to jump in a car and head to the hospital, it just means that your body is doing what it does to get ready for your baby to come. Oh. Oh. Number two, the baby dropping, or lightning as some people like to say. And this simply means that your baby is starting to drop lower into your pelvis, and they are getting into the position for birth. Now before the baby drops, they are often high, putting a lot of pressure under your ribs and against your lungs and your stomach. But once the baby starts to move into the lower pelvis, it frees up a little bit of space in between your uterus and your ribs, which often helps you to breathe a little bit better. And you might feel a little bit lighter up in this area, which is probably where they got the term lightning. But there is a trade-off. So you might feel less pressure under your ribs, but with the baby lower in the pelvis, you're gonna notice more pressure down there. And you might feel that pressure on your bladder, which is gonna make you pee more often, or just some discomfort in the vaginal or the pelvic area. Number three, something called bloody show. Now, as your cervix starts to thin and soften, there are blood vessels on the cervix that can break and bleed. And because of this, you might notice a little bit of blood tinged mucusy discharge. And this is called bloody show. And this is actually totally normal and totally fine during the last weeks of pregnancy. But if you notice really heavy bleeding, like a period, this is not normal. And if this happens, you need to go to the hospital right away. I think we have to go to the hospital. Number four, more Braxton Hicks contractions. Now we've talked a lot about what Braxton Hicks contractions feel like compared to real labor contractions in some previous videos. However, as you get closer and closer to your due date, you might notice that those Braxton Hicks contractions can become more frequent and even more painful. So these soft signs of labor just show you that your body is progressing and preparing for delivery, but they don't usually mean that delivery is imminent. So let's talk about what those signs are next. So as active labor approaches, some women feel some vague symptoms that you could just disregard as regular pregnancy problems, but you need to know to watch for them at this point because they could be symptoms of early labor. So pay attention if you start noticing more mood swings, uh, shivering, feeling restless, uh, diarrhea, or cramps in the pelvis or the low back. Watch for something called membrane rupture. You might be familiar with the term, your water breaking, it's the same thing. So the sac that surrounds your baby inside your uterus is called the amniotic sac. And when that amniotic sac breaks and your water comes out, you need to call your OB or just go to the hospital. Your water can break before labor, but for most women, it breaks when you are already in labor. You might feel a gush from your vagina, or you might feel a steady trickle of fluid. And honestly, believe it or not, sometimes you might not be able to tell if your water has broken and you're trickling out fluid, or if you are leaking out urine, because the baby's really putting a lot of pressure on your lower bladder, and we can have accidents. It's not your fault, it's just part of being pregnant. So if you're ever not sure if it's your water or if it's your pee, call your OB, because there's a really easy test that they can do at the office to help know if it's amniotic fluid or not. Now everything that I just mentioned is important to know about, but the only real sign that labor has begun is regular labor contractions. So how do you tell the difference between true labor contractions and Braxton Hicks? Well, 
here are a few ways to tell. So true labor contractions will come at regular intervals and they'll usually last anywhere from 60 to 90 seconds. And as time progresses, the contractions happen closer and closer together and become stronger, more intense. What? True labor contractions don't change their pattern with position changes. So whether you are walking around or you're resting, the contractions will continue. And as they progress, it becomes more difficult to walk or talk through a contraction. But if you still aren't really sure, a good easy rule of thumb is if you have regular painful contractions that happen every 10 minutes or more for more than an hour, call your OB or your midwife because they can help you determine if it's time to go to the hospital or not. Okay, mamas, the time is getting close for you to hold your new babies. I'm honestly so excited for you. It's the best feeling ever. Next week, we have so much to talk about, so make sure to subscribe to Diana in the Pink and hit the notification bell so you'll be notified of all of my future videos. And hey, if you're new to Diana in the Pink, I've actually done an entire playlist week by week of your pregnancy. And I highly recommend that you go back and check out some of my earlier third trimester videos. It's filled with a ton of really good, important information that you really need to know. So I'm gonna put that playlist right here. Click on that and I will see you over there. At this point, many babies have found their way into the head down position. We call this the cephalic position. And it's the position that the babies prefer to be in as your body prepares for delivery.